Hello everyone, welcome back to another Diamond Fire tutorial. Today we are going to be creating a shop system. Players will be able to sell items for money and then use that money to purchase other items. Uh, for this example here, uh, it's going to be very simple. Players will sell potatoes and purchase diamonds. And those are the only items we're going to support um, because it's really just duplicating code to make it more items. So, we are going to start with um, how players buy and sell the items is they're going to be right-clicking the signs. So we will, of course, be using a player event, uh, and it will be a player right-click event. Um, you can place these events all the way on uh, the edge if you're concerned about space. Um, I like to place them here just for aesthetic reasons, but if you're really maximizing space, you can go ahead and place it on the far edge. Now we are going to right click this, we are going to go to click events, and we are going to go to player right click event so we can detect when they right click on those buy and sell signs. Now, to detect uh, what sort of sign that they're clicking on, there's a number of ways that we could do this, uh, but I'm going to do it in sort of the easiest way for this example, which is we have an oak sign for purchasing and a birch sign for selling. For this, we're going to be using the if player block, and we are going to be using locational conditions and is looking at block. Now, if you look at the description here, uh, you can use either a block type, which will be, for example, if they're looking at you know, dirt or grass or an oak sign. That'll be the if player condition. You could also use the location being like if they're looking at the block at this specific location, uh, then we'll do whatever we're doing inside that if statement. Generally, location is going to be uh, the most precise uh, and reliable, but you'll need to update those locations if you move, you know, the signs or whatever. Because we only have the two signs, I'm just going to go ahead and use blocks. Now I'm going to start by putting the birch sign in the chest here for the selling. Uh, selling will be kind of the first step that we look at. Uh, one cool thing, you notice I could open this chest and place the birch sign inside, but there is a nifty little shortcut where if I hold the item I want to put in the chest and I left click, like I'm breaking the chest, it will pop right in there and you can kind of hear the little pop sound effect sometimes. So that is uh, just a cool thing, makes life a little bit faster. Now we're going to look at, okay, we have, uh, if the player right clicks the birch sign, then we want to have them sell their potatoes. So first, uh, we have to check if they have potatoes to sell. We will go ahead and say, if player, again, now we have these two if statements nested inside of each other. And we're going to say, if the player, item conditions, has item, so if they have at least one potato to sell, we are going to put that in the chest here, um, and we can see there's has any items or has all items. If we had multiple items in here, that would apply, but it does not. We're just looking at potatoes. So if they have a potato to sell, then we will have them sell the potato. Now to sell the potato, we'll first have a player action to remove the potato from their inventory. So we're going to go to item management, and we're going to click on remove items, and we are going to uh, just grab that potato here and we're going to have it remove the potato from their inventory. So they are selling one potato. Now we need to give them the money for selling the potato. And here is where things get interesting. Uh, to maintain every player's balance of money, we are going to be using the set variable block right here. So I'm going to go ahead and place that down. And now what we want to do is we we'll want to have a variable to track each player's balance. Um, now let's say we took a variable if we just named it money or something. That's going to be just one global money variable, so everyone would have, you know, a shared balance, uh, but that's not how we want to do it. We want to have everyone have an individual balance for this game. So we are going to name the variable percent default money. Now what this percent default does is when this code gets run, it is going to replace the percent default with the name of the player who activated this event. That's what default player means. You can also use other codes such as percent damager or percent killer or, or percent victim in events that might have those things like damage events, kill events, death events, that sort of thing. Um, and it will replace with those targets names respectively. But for this event, we just have the default player, the player who right clicked um, and we are wanting to get their money. So we will have this variable named like so. We will want to keep this as a game variable so that their money um, continues across the game. Uh, and now we have that in the chest. Now what we're going to do is we want to increase the player's money by 10 when they sell the potato. So we are going to go into numerical actions. This will allow us to do things like addition and subtraction. Um, now to add 10 to the variable, um, we 
can simply do increment number here. Um, and what this will do basically is it'll take our variable and then whatever number that we put in the chest, it will add that number to the variable. We could also just duplicate the variable and say, for example, you know, money equals money plus 10, uh, and we would use this function, but we can save ourselves some time by using the increment feature. Now I'm going to get a number item from the values menu, uh, and I'm going to take that and I am going to write the number 10. Now we're going to put that uh, in the chest. Remember, we can use our shortcut um, just like before. And now we are incrementing default money by 10. So default money is going up by 10 when they sell the potato. Let's go ahead and add a case. What if they don't have any potatoes? Well, then they don't get any money, but we should explain to them why they're not getting any money. So we're going to put an else block here, uh, and we're gonna put it right after this if statement for if player has item potato, and we'll put it here like so. And inside these pistons, this will be code that only runs if they do not have a potato. So we're gonna put a player action here, and we are going to go to communication. We are going to click send message, and we are going to set it to something like, uh, you have no potatoes, sad face. Perfect. Now we have that message that will be sent to the player if they attempt to sell with no potatoes. So in fact, if we play the game right now, we'll see that if we click here, uh, we have no potatoes. Very sad. Now um, we have all of this beautiful logic for the potatoes, but what about for purchasing the diamonds? Uh, well, we are going to go all the way to the end of this line here and have a new if player. And this is also going to be an if player is looking at block. But this time we are going to be using the oak sign for if they are looking at the oak sign, which is being used to purchase the diamonds. So if they're clicking on the oak sign, what do we need to do? Last time it was, do they have any potatoes? This time it's, do they have enough money to purchase the diamond? Um, and now money is not an item. It's a variable, so we're going to be using the if variable block uh, to determine whether they have enough money. So we will place that here, and you can see it works basically just like the if player block. Um, and this right here, uh, the default is if variable equals. We want to say if variable is greater than or equal to. So if our money number is greater than or equal to the price of the diamond, which is 100, then we will allow them to purchase the diamond. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that variable and that number. Uh, this variable should be named the same as the other one, default money, and the number will be 100. That is the price of the diamond. So you can see now we have if uh, default money is greater than or equal to 100, then we get to do our purchasing the diamond logic. So uh, first we will want to go ahead and give them their diamond and that will of course just be a standard player action, give items, and we will put a diamond in the chest. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take away um, that 100 from their money because they have spent it on the diamond and that will once again use our set variable block. So we are going to place that right here and we are going to use again numerical actions and like we used increment for selling, for purchasing, taking away money, we are going to be using decrement, which is exactly the opposite of increment. It is subtracting. So we are going to choose that and we will be doing the same thing. I'm going to grab that default money variable again and that 100 number and we're going to place that here like so. So now we're saying default money will be decreased by 100 when they purchase the diamond. So now uh, let's add another else block to where if they don't have enough money, uh, we'll be sending them a message telling them that they do not have enough money to purchase the diamond. So we will say, you do not have the funds to purchase the diamond. Boo hoo. All right, here we go. It's an amazing message. Uh, now we can test out the game and you can see that we have just all kinds of sadness here because we have no items to sell and thus no money to buy items. So let's go ahead and uh, give ourselves some items. I'm going to place down another player event. We're going to make this the player join game event and we are going to go with player action, give items, and I'm going to go ahead and give us a stack of potatoes so that we will be able to use some money. When we uh, sell the potato, we should gain 10 cash. Um, and I'm going to go ahead actually and add a message here 
when we sell the potato. So right after the increase in money, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send a message that says, um, sold potato for 10 uh, gamer cash. We're gonna call our money gamer cash. Um, and then similarly, we're going to have when we purchase the diamond, actually we don't really need a message because the diamond will appear in the inventory. It should be pretty obvious. So here we go. We are selling and we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And you can see at 90, we still don't have enough, but when we hit 100, we can purchase the diamond. And there we go. Our balance is now back to zero. So you can see that we cannot purchase another diamond. And that is the basics of the shop system. I think we have one more thing to do here, which is it would be really nice if we could actually see at any given time uh, how much money we have. So let's go ahead and uh, let's add another event. Maybe we'll have the player. Let's make it the player sneak event for checking money. That's under movement events, player sneak events. So when we press that, that shift button here, we will get to see our balance. And how we can do that uh, is we can use a player action and we can use send message. So we're gonna send a message with the balance. Um, and now this is pretty cool. We are going to use the default money variable once more, and we are going to place that in the chest. Uh, and this will just send the number, but it's a little bit cleaner if we add some text around it. So I'm going to grab uh, actually a couple of text items and we are going to set this first one to, uh, let's use the green color code because it's nice. You have, and then uh, gamer cash. And now I'm going to put you have, and then the amount of money that you have, gamer cash. And so it should send you have however much gamer cash. Um, and we can see here on text value merging, um, we want to add spaces so that there's spaces between this so it looks nice. Um, and alignment will just use regular. And so now if we play the game uh, and we hit sneak, we see you have zero gamer cash. If we sell a couple potatoes, you can see we now have 20. Um, we can sell some more. Uh, now we're up to 120. We're gonna purchase a diamond and now we are back down to 20. And that is a simple shop system. Uh, if there are other tutorials that you would like to see, please leave a comment in the comments section and be sure to check out the other tutorials on our website. Thanks, and see you next time.